She was uh, the <laughs> co-chair of the student committee um, a year ago, two years ago, a year ago. Um, and she did a great job. And now she is co-chairing the new, newly reinstated provisional committee. Um, she is also a designer at Destroy the Box Creative. And she's going to talk to us a little bit today about graduating and working in the industry right out of school. So I'll hand it over to you, Danielle, to begin your presentation. So yeah, as Rupsha mentioned, I'm a multidisciplinary designer. I live in Edmonton, Alberta. Uh, it's only six o'clock here. Just finished work. And I'm gonna give a, a short intro um, through my schooling just for some background and then I'll focus on my life after school and my first design jobs. Oops. So here's a short timeline. I actually went straight into into accounting from high school uh, and then I decided to switch degrees into design. I had a smaller design job at a place called Center for Healthy Communities through the U of A, and that was during school. And then I did an internship at Destroy the Box, where I currently work now. So yeah, as I mentioned, I, I started school through accounting at the U University of Alberta. Um, math was always my strongest subject, and I thought that I liked it enough to go into accounting. Uh, what I didn't realize was that accounting was not like math at all. Uh, it was a lot of memorizing balance sheets and rules, and I was not very interested, so therefore I didn't study. Uh, I had also always excelled at art throughout grade school, but I didn't know that you could go to school for design until I had a friend of mine from high school um, that entered the program at U of A, and from there I decided to switch degrees. I switched mid school year, so I started with the U of A has some fundamental courses that you could take. So I used those to build my port my entry portfolio. So my program was called Bachelor of Design in Visual Visual Communication Design. The U of A has various routes that you can take. So you can focus your degree on certain things like engineering and sociology. Uh, I took the business marketing route because I felt like it went well with design and some of my business courses that I already took also counted. So that was awesome. Uh, the design program at U of A has a strong focus on fundamentals. So I had to take various drawing courses. I decided to show some of my drawing work as I spent a lot of time on them. Um, they also, have just a, a strong focus in art um, overall. So you, you kind of had to go through different art routes. You had to choose one so that you could carry through into the senior levels of them. Uh, we had sculpture, painting, and printmaking, which I decided to do. The U of A has a state-of-the-art printmaking studio, and I thought it would be really interesting to learn the different techniques. So I did relief um, through lino cuts and wood cuts, as well as lithography and etching. And then at the bottom there is one of my senior printmaking courses. I made an accordion book out of a bunch of tiny um, etching prints of a barn and put them all together. So one of the projects from school I'm most proud of is this conference design. It's hypothetical conference. I called it Flixated, and it was meant to be a conference for people who binge watch Netflix um, TV series. So the popular shows at the time were Stranger Things, Orange is the New Black, and 13 Reasons Why. So the identity focused around different objects from those shows. And then the idea was that um, conference goers could go meet the cast and creators of the shows. So one aspect I was pretty proud of was that I, exec I executed this design on the fan forage of the book. Um, I thought it was a good challenge for myself. Our grad show had a review process um, in which professors actually could tell you which projects were allowed in the grad show. And unfortunately, this one was not selected, but it's always one of my favorite projects to show people, so I decided to include it. 
Another favorite project was this board game redesign, um, which was in my grad show. It was a group project consisted of redesigning the game Terraforming Mars. Um, if you don't know it, it's a strategic spa space themed game and it takes a really long time to play. Um, you can see us playing it on the left as we had to really study which aspects of the design were essential. Um, we also had um, an industrial design student as a partner as well to help make the 3D objects, the pieces, as well as the board. I was in charge of the icon system, this player board here, and the player cards. So our grad show was supposed to be right when the pandemic got bad. So sadly, this is the extent that I got a grad show. All of our posters were made and ready to be installed at the gallery, but um, exactly on installation day is when it got shut down. So uh, my posters are still in a storage room somewhere at the U of A. <laughs> so as previously mentioned, my first design job was a university related job. Um, through the Center, Center for Healthy Communities. I got this job through a professor, Jillian Harvey, who also does work with the RGD. She had emailed me recommending the job to me since she knew the people um, who worked there. And I immediately jumped at the opportunity to get the design experience. So I don't have much to show from this job because it was research-based. So a lot of the design was confidential and preliminary. Um, but this is the building I worked in. It was a standard office with cubicles. I was the only design related person. They had never had a design student or any design related person. And I could make my schedule as I saw fit around my class schedule, which was really nice. And my official title was design research assistant. So I worked on research report templates, their identity, as well as the small infographic that is the only proof that I worked there. Um, it was an infographic for a study done on the accessibility of entrances, entrances across White Avenue in Edmonton, which is a street with a bunch of restaurants and stores. So after that, I started, decided to start to look for an internship that I could use for credit while I was still working there to fill in my my classes and get more experience. I did this by cold emailing many small studios in Edmonton. Uh, I got a couple replies. One had offered me an interview after I had already established this internship. And one was kind of just giving me feedback on my portfolio, which was nice. Um, I actually got this job through my cousin who said her friend was looking for an intern at and it turned out to be a PR firm, but I thought, why not try? They could be design related things. So I emailed her and she said that she doesn't do design directly, but that the designer she worked with was also looking for an intern and she could connect us. So from there, I went for an interview and the rest is history. <laughs> So Destroy the Box is a multidisciplinary studio. There's only three employees, including me. Uh, this is our, our small office. We have a couch to meet the clients and have presentations around on that TV. And then that, there's the back area where our desks are and we have them all facing each other. So it's really collaborative. Since the pandemic, I've been working from home. This shows the evolution of my home office space. Started at the kitchen table as I didn't think I'd be there for so long. And then halfway through the year, I decided to establish a little space in the living room as we had no free rooms since we rent from my boyfriend's brother. So I've worked with over 30 different clients in the two years of being here. I do focus on certain clients, such as the Edmonton Police Service. Um, one of my first projects with them was through my internship, and it was a cannabis campaign that was also included in my grad work. It consisted of me as the production designer, compo compositing the images together and creating a s consistent look across all applications. Uh, it included billboards, a press release, as well as digital applications. 
Uh, other projects for the EPS included another cannabis campaign, which focused on edibles. And they, the idea was that they wanted it to look like a meme. So that's what we did. And a mail theft postcard that was mailed out to um, a significant area of Edmonton to warn them to watch their mail. Another more recent project for EPS was their Young People Strategy Book. So this was a 40 page booklet, <clears throat> excuse me, that consisted of the police plan on their approach on how, with how to interact with young people. Um, the design was based on their full strategic plan, which I also helped to, to design, um, but we changed the color scheme and added different shapes like circles that were more appropriate to be youth focused. And this was shared to the public as well as went live on their website. Another large client that I do tons of work for is the Italian Center. It's a chain of Italian grocery stores here in Edmonton. I do ads, social ads. Um, I designed their full calendar, which was based on sharing a recipe each month that they could make, people could make with the ingredients in their store. Um, and then on the left side there uh, is a collaboration that they did with Giordano from the Calgary Flames to raise money from his foundation. So that was a pretty cool project. So, oh, how do I get out of here? There we go. I'll show you. This is a, one of the newer websites that I've done. Um, it's actually going live this week. This is um, not live yet, but I got permission to share. Um, it's called Five Star Homes. So this is an Edmonton home builder. Uh, it was a project where I had to use a pre-existing branding and create a look and feel that was consistent with, with their logo. So my previous websites before this were a dental office and a therapist. So this was a jump up in difficulty for me. I chose a color palette that worked with their logo and I designed everything from the rollovers that you see here um, to the filter applications that I'll show you in a second. So we used this star application from their logo and added it to the photo so it had a unique shape. Um, and then one of the bigger challenges in this website was um, all of the information that needed to go on these little thumbnails. So there's a lot of specs that the client wanted to be on there. And the struggle was to create hierarchy um, so it was easy to comprehend. And then these are the filter applications. So. Um, there's different filters that you could filter all of the houses by. There's not too many houses in there right now. But yeah, so that's one of my more recent work. I also have two other websites in the development stages right now. Um, one of them being a full directory for finding local businesses across Canada. So that was by far my largest site and it took um, many hours to try to wrap my brain around its functionality and I can't wait till it goes public. Okay, so now I'm going to share some of the more of the information side of life after school. So starting with my job search. Uh, these are some of my tips um, that worked for me at least. So use your connections. Um, if someone you know you know are looking for an intern, you just never know who who knows who, like what happened with me. Um, in my opinion, you don't need like a fancy flashy website. I didn't even have one for either of my design jobs. I used a PDF portfolio for both. And the most important thing is to let your work speak for itself and know your projects inside and out. Um, should they have any questions and um, your rationale for your projects. Uh, I would still recommend cold emailing. Uh, I thought it was good practice and you, I think you really have nothing to lose in doing so. And you might even get some, some feedback on your portfolio. So regarding wages and salary, um, I recommend just to do your research, use use the resources available to you, including mentors. I'm currently in the RGD mentor pro 
program. Um, my mentor is Danielle Hitchcock, and she helped me in my most recent um, negotiation with wages. And we, I also use the creative earner salary to gauge where I should be. Um, ask for what you deserve. Even if you think it may be high, salary and wages are a conversation. And if you aim high, you can negotiate to a wage you still deserve. And try not to compare yourself to others, even if they're in a different kind of design occupation, because every job is different and they may have different budgets. So here's some of the challenges that I've had since leaving school. So some of them are pandemic related, as I noted here. So I've, I haven't had much pre presenting experience. All of my client communication has now been through emailing or messaging systems. So it's been a lot of trying to explain myself all through words, which is a little bit challenging. Um, learning to be independent. So I'm personally, I'm a designer that is driven by collab collaboration and feedback. So um, it was a challenge for me to learn how to be confident working alone, uh, even though I still communicate with my bosses through messaging. Uh, it was still a big jump for me, uh, managing multiple clients at once. So like I said, I've worked with many clients and I usually have about five on the go at a time. Um, learning how to work with an outsourced developer. So I learned web, I kind of learned web design in school, but I didn't um, learn how to tell developers how you want the the website to function if you don't do the development development yourself um, and you will be surprised how much work you do with Microsoft programs um, it's inevitable and some clients is the only thing they're familiar with so I have relearned PowerPoint and Microsoft and I'm still googling every day to figure out those systems <laughs> and lastly something that we will all have at some point is burnout and creative block. So <clears throat> one of my major challenges was this project um, where I experienced that creative block, as I mentioned. So this was a logo project for the Edmonton Police Service. Um, it was for a new unit that would focus on helping um, the most vulnerable and directing them to services they need, such as rehab or support services, instead of just um, arresting them and putting them in the cell for a night. Um, helping those who are homeless has always been an important cause to me, and I felt huge pressure on myself to succeed with this logo. And I got stuck in the exploration phase because I felt like nothing was good enough, and I just decided to show some of these screenshots of just how many logos I had in this in this um, phase of exploration and I spent so many hours looking at inspiration and I probably had over 100 screenshots of things that I liked and from there I just dug myself deeper because I was always comparing myself to all of these um, amazing logos that I had in my inspo a folder so my bosses really helped me through this and they pointed me in different directions and really let me took my, take my time. Um, they even mentioned that, you know, working on a different project might help for a bit. So I did that and eventually um, we came to a solution. So this is a final logo. It's based on the, the idea of interlocking lines symbolizing support. Um, uh, it also has a lens shape representing change in perspective of the police service and in the very middle a triangle for change. Um, this is applied to clothing and vehicle wraps which the EPS handled on their own. So some other tips that I have, um, not every project you touch is going to be groundbro groundbreaking. Sometimes they're clients that just want what they want and as much as you can argue with them they're the client at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, that's one. Uh, don't be afraid to voice your opinion, use your education and have reasons for your choices. It may not always go your way, but at least you gave rationale and your employer will know what you're capable of next time. 
don't be afraid to ask questions. This is how you learn and how I have learned the most over the past year. Um, and you'll be more confident the next time around. Create a resource library so you'll learn you'll learn of lots of helpful links and inspiration sites um, through your your first kind of jobs. And so when you have a library, you always have a place to go to find these and create boundaries, take breaks, and take care of yourself. Lastly, my RGD life. So I was a student member from 2017 to 2020. I attended Design Thinkers in 2018, um, where I met Hillary briefly, and she mentioned the student committee, and I joined the student committee. Um, from there, I became chair for one year, and then I became a provisional RGD after graduation through Creative Directions. And I think this is a really good way to do it because you get <clears throat> not only one, but three um, portfolio reviews and they can count as your provisional <clears throat> review, sorry. Um, and then I joined the, the membership committee since I was no longer a student in July. And I helped create the membership relief program, which is um, a program that members can apply for to get their Get, get no fees for the year if they're having financial issues. And now I'm the co-chair of the Reinstated Provisional Committee, which we just finished um, applications. They closed yesterday, so it hasn't really gone anywhere yet, but I'm hoping that we can start up next month. And any questions now? Um, this is my design page. Um, it currently has nothing on it, but I'm hoping that if I get some followers, it will motivate me to <laughs> post something and um, I'd like to rebrand myself. So hopefully that happens. Amazing. Good and yell. Thank you. Who has questions? I have a question for Danielle. Um, I'm just wondering if you could maybe talk a little bit more about the process of communicating your design to that outsourced developer and sort of like what that looks like for you. Sure. So um, Destroy the Box has always kind of had a focus on website design. So we do do a lot of website design. And so my boss is really helpful with that. Um, our developer is actually uh, across the sea, so we outsource, um, <clears throat> and he lives pretty far away. So I have never actually talked to him, but I just message him through emails, and it it basically requires a lot of screenshots and a lot of that markup feature in preview where I can mark up what I need to be done and then a lot of text to go with it to explain what I need. Um, one of the helpful things with XD, which is what I've been using to design my websites, is the prototype feature. So um, that is a lot, a lot easier than than before. I was just sending um the web pages and having to explain everything basically but now i've started to use prototype and he can actually see the functionality that i need thank you Hi, I'm just going to talk for like a second. Um, it's not so much a question. I just really liked how you spoke about um, burnout and kind of transitioning into this through a pandemic. I know that like in the co-op I had, it was kind of difficult to actually get a gauge on what the industry was like because it was completely throughout the pandemic. And I just, it's always nice to hear people like going through this transition at the same time it's nice to hear that we're kind of in the same boat and that we have some shared perspectives on it because it's definitely been an interesting thing to get used to so thank you for sharing that aspect oh yeah for sure it's 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 really easy to 
to burn out when you're working from home, I feel, because when you're in the office, you'd go home and your workday was over, but now my computer's always there. So I really just have to remind myself that no matter how busy I am, I, I can take a break. And my boss knows that I take an hour for lunch every day. And if I need to, I can work an hour after five o'clock to make up for it, you know, as long as I, I take a break and then it helps with your, your mind being fresh as well. Uh, I have a question. What would you say are some of your goals moving forward? Do you have, have you thought about, you know, what your, yeah, do you have goals in how you want to develop? Mm -hmm. So, um, I just had my performance review, as I mentioned, negotiating wage and stuff. So that was that was nice to have. Um, they actually uh, went over different categories and then like scored me. And one of the questions they had was um, what, how I want to improve. So I put, um, I'd like to, you know, just continue learning. I'd like to learn more motion design as um, it's something that our company hasn't doesn't really do right now but um, he said that if if I want to learn that then we can look at which clients we can start integrating some of that in there and yeah I guess just also I would like to actually present to a client as I've only presented in school situations with a whole class there, but I'd like one-on-one um, -on -one presentation in person eventually <laughs> to see how that would go. <laughs> Such a quiet group tonight. Just piggyback offing, um, piggyback off uh, Hillary's question. Um, in terms of the provisional committee, can you tell us a little bit more about some of the things that you want to accomplish with the provisional committee for anyone who wants to kind of join in after they graduate? Sure. So we haven't really established any specific initiatives yet. We're kind of going to engage um, from the members that we do acquire what what they feel is missing from the RGD um, and basically just go from there. Um, but we did have, um, we did have goals of getting members from across Canada, which um, is still a challenge. Most of our members that applied are still from Ontario, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but we did want different perspectives. So I'm still looking to find some more people from Western Canada, if anyone knows anyone. <laughs> I think there are a couple of members here that are graduating that are in Western Canada. So maybe yeah, like think said, about um, part of that. Yeah, like I said, it was really great to do my provisional application through Creative Directions. Um, because I got more than one portfolio review, which is great. I got lots of feedback and then I became a provisional like almost directly after I graduated, which was really helpful. And Creative Directions is really great anyway. So mm -hmm. it's all in one, it's a bundle, do it. <laughs> what was that um, portfolio review process like through Creative Directions? Um, basically, uh, RGD just set me up with um, three people um, and then they were all virtual so I trying to think I did have a website by then so um, my my portfolio website is just through Adobe portfolio like I said I'm not interested in anything super fancy for my portfolio and it's free through Adobe so that's what I did um, and then I basically just went through the first couple projects with each one. Um, and some of them gave feedback after every project and some of them waited till the end. Um, it, nothing was major with the feedback, just like small tips on how I could improve presenting them and 
um, what aspects I could maybe show more of, like the the research that was behind some of the projects. Yeah, just to let everyone know, the, the review that is required for provisional membership is not intended to be um, super, like, well, it's not intended to be stressful at all because it's as much as, it's it's kind of like you show up, you are prepared, you have a portfolio, and that's the main criteria that anyone who's graduating from a graphic design program um, would have to worry about, really. And then, yeah, it's really more about pushing you to have that experience and to get that um, that feedback. Yeah, I think it's a, like a misconception that it's going to be like super serious, like you're getting your RGD status, like because there's a test and you're scored on certain things, but it's not. You just you present you present your work just like I presented my work to you now, and then they give you feedback and then you're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's surprising. I mean, it's particularly easy with Creative Directions because it's basically set up for you. Whereas when it's not as part of Creative Directions, you have to do more work in terms of contacting your reviewer and, and setting that up and sort of organizing it. But, um, and this year with Creative Directions, when you, well, after you register, you will be sent a form that has the reviewers. So, th so last year we did the setup. This year, you'll get to pick from the list of reviewers and the times. So okay. we'll have all the, we'll have the reviewers listed you can find out, you can research them, pick who you want, and then it will also identify the times that they're available. So you will be picking, as part of the form, picking the reviewer and picking the time at the same time. So you know, like it's just a one-stop kind of thing. And the other thing to keep in mind is um, because we have so many reviewers, they'll be getting full up and changing. So if you go and, um, you know, all three don't totally thrill you, um, or maybe they all do, like fill it out as soon as you can, or for any of the people that you are interested, or just keep going back, because it will change. Um, okay. Yeah, that's kind of a trick because we can't list them. We're not going to list them all at the same time. So they'll be changing as time. And also, we're not going to keep people up there that are have been booked. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so that'll be a, an interesting thing. Uh, well, just sorry. Add, um, based on my goals, I forgot to add this into my presentation, but um, I think it's important to note that I think a lot of students aim for like a larger studio right out of right out of school, like one that has huge clients and stuff. But I found it really helpful to start smaller um, because I basically have have two people who have been in the industry for over 15 years at my disposal to ask questions and learn from every day um, instead of, you know, you might be a bit more left behind in an agency kind of format. Um, but I do have goals to, um, you know, try somewhere larger eventually um, and see which one is best fit for me. Um, I feel like the Center for Healthy Communities was almost like a, kind of like an in-house experience. So I kind of got that under my belt. And now I'm, I am enjoying this smaller studio experience, especially now that you know, I have work and we're in a pandemic, so I'm happy where I am right now, but eventually I'll start um, looking at larger studios, see if that comes my way. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I think that in the smaller studios, you probably get um, a lot more direct access to the owners and you probably also get that, 
you know, they're much more specialized in the larger agencies where you sort of get, I think, funneled into one track where you might be now doing motion or now doing web and you wouldn't have as much of a chance to try lots of different things. So if you're super keen on like environmental graphic design or or some or motion or web now and and so you want to specialize in that, that's you know, do that. But um if you want to sort of have your first experience to try different things, I think um a smaller studio probably allows for that. Totally. And I, I love the point about um Microsoft Word. I'm always so it's always so funny to me how many designers ask me, do you have anyone who can do things in in Microsoft Word and PowerPoint? Because there's especially with in-house um like bigger companies, they want templates. They want templates and they want them in Word uh or PowerPoint. It's kind of and like, like the thing. funny thing is with the templates is um in my experience a lot of the time you give them a template and then they're like I can't they figure it. it out. You just do it. And then I ended up working I ended up working up working in PowerPoint instead. <laughs> when I could have just done it from InDesign to begin with. Oh well. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Do you want to um, close your screen? I don't know how you do that. Do you, maybe I need to un- I don't know either. Because I, I, I would like to see you. I can't see you right now. Here, oh. Maybe I can make you not. Oh, that. there you are. Yeah. Okay, good. Hooray. I actually have a question uh, too. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, so I'm actually in the same boat right now. I'm doing my internship in a super small studio. There was only uh, two person uh, with me or three. And it's been, uh, a weird segue uh, from school because they tracked every single hours. Like um, they have, they work with uh, workflow, and obviously, like budget wise, they have to. Uh, let's say uh, they plan like four hours for this uh, project, and like they charge for those hours, so they won't yeah. uh, go past them. Obviously, for money wise, um, and. Last year, I actually worked for the government where everything that's due, like last week, you can like beat, like you can do it in a month. And, you know, it's <laughs> time wise, everything is like slower and has to go through like, so I could spend much more time on stuff where now I'm stressed that I, because I'm, uh, I'm a, a bit like not a beginner, but new in the field. Um, and I spend more time on stuff. So I feel like investment wise, it's not good. How do like do you just get faster? Should I just not at the beginning care about the time or? Yeah, how? that's that's hard. I actually they're not that um, strict at where I work, so I actually wasn't even logging time at all until uh, I took it upon myself actually because I wanted to know how much I was spending on projects. Um, which I feel like is almost just as bad because sometimes I just wonder like, when is this due? When does he want this by? Cause I'm not really sure. And then I'm like, am I working too slow or am I working too fast? Um, but yeah, I guess it's kind of hard to gauge. I think I would just like, in my case, um, during my, um review i actually just said like um how do you feel i'm doing time wise like i always wonder if i'm working too fast or too slow um and they said i was doing great so maybe just be upfront and and ask if if the budgets are like um i guess do you know if they're client um chosen or if they're chosen by your work I'm sorry, I'm not sure I get the question. Like, like, is the deadline from your client, like is the client like um, I need it by Thursday, so that's where your deadline comes from? It's usually the company that does the invoice. Uh, so they like- They budgeted a certain the, number of hours. Yeah, you know? exactly. Maybe yeah. I would I would just be upfront and say, um, I feel like the timelines are a little short and how could I, how could I improve my workflow or could we extend um, all of these deadlines at once? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's thank you so much. 
That's a really interesting question. I mean, I definitely think I, I wouldn't say that one is necessarily rep, like one experience for you, Catherine, is well, your two experiences are completely representative of in house versus small studio. I think every environment is different. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, I know lots of in house designers right now that are just like slammed and just being like, just so exhausted um especially government ones but probably not federal government so much um although honestly i can't say but um yeah it's an it's an interesting question to potentially think about when you talk when you're in an interview because timing people like studios are environments are so different some studios some ad agencies in particular they don't have great work-life balance and they expect you to work a lot. So understanding what the expectations are is not a bad thing um, when you're starting out. Um, it's like Danielle said, ask questions, always ask questions. Um, yeah, I think with mine, like I started time tracking because my boss was asking me like, oh, I'm invoicing this client. How long did you spend on this? And then I <laughs> I didn't have any track record. Oh, no. So I started time tracking myself. And then sometimes when I finish projects and he's asking for the hours, I just straight up ask, like, how is that for time? Like, is that too much or too little? Or is that what you were expecting? Um, stuff like that. And I think Hillary's right. It depends on kind of the situation like I do have a client um it's a credit card company actually they're just getting started and we are basically their in-house designer like we're their only designer so and because they're technically my client like I'm the only one that does work for them the deadlines are crazy like the she put stuff in the day of and then she's like all oh, this is due tomorrow and they're not my only client so i just said to my boss like um it's getting a little bit much which um to my surprise he said um you know it's it's work right now so i am really busy right now but we might not be later so yeah. it all depends on the situation but like i said be upfront like like i did Awesome, thank you. Okay, well, there was silence, so I think we're going to move on to the actual meeting. But everyone can also reach out to Danielle on Instagram after if you have other questions or on the, are you in the student Slack? I think you are. Yeah, I am. Okay. Yep. Nope. Thank you for having me. Oh, that's private. Thanks oh, for thank coming, you. Danielle. Nice to meet you. Bye. Yeah.